You don't need a luxury kitchen to prepare gourmet meals. My name is Dennis. I live in a mobile home in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. What I want to do in this video is I want to make ice cream again. I've made ice cream several times, and there's different ways of making ice cream. What I want to do in this one is kind of a French way, where you start off by cooking a custard first, and then I'm going to flavor it with boysenberry. But rather than trying to find fresh boysenberries, or worse yet, canned boysenberries, because they have the seeds in them, the best way to flavor this is with a boysenberry jam, and preferably a seedless jam, because I think boysenberry seeds are obnoxious. <laughs> so let me show you how I'm going to make this boysenberry ice cream. When I cook a custard, I don't take any chances with it. I won't cook it over direct heat. I set up a double boiler. So I put about a cup of water in a larger pan, bring that to a boil. I'll put my custard ingredients in this and then put that over the boiling water and stir constantly while my custard is cooking. The idea behind that is the water isn't going to get up above 212 degrees Fahrenheit, 100 Celsius. Therefore, you don't have really high heat on the bottom of your pan. You're much less likely to scorch your custard, scramble your eggs. It's a safer way of making custard. A lot of people will do it over direct heat. I don't take that risk. So into this pan now, I want to put five egg yolks. These are from large eggs. I reserved the whites for cookies. And then I want to add one egg to that. Okay. And then one cup of milk. You can use half and half. And then one half of a cup, 100 grams of sugar. Then I'm going to whisk that really well and then set up my double boiler. So there's my water now coming up to the boil. And I'm going to stand here and stir this the whole while while this is cooking. And you can see by the way it runs off that spatula how thin that is right now. But after 10 minutes, this will be nicely thick. So now there I am after 10 minutes. Look at how nice and thick that is. If you do see any lumps start to form, I'm going to get that off the heat now. Because that is done. If you do see any lumps start to form in the process, just take out the wax, the, the spatula and put a whisk in there and just whisk it really well to break those lumps up and then just keep on stirring and whisking. That's what I do. A lot of recipes say to strain this afterwards, but I don't think it needs it because it doesn't have a big lumps in it. If you don't cook it right, you'll get the big lumps. All right, now I'm ready to start adding the remaining ingredients to make my base for my boysenberry ice cream. Now there is my custard, beautifully thick. To this I want to add, I'm going to do this first. This is one half, no this is eight ounces, 225 grams, roughly three quarters of a cup of seedless boysenberry jam. And then I'm going to whisk that in while it's still warm because the heat will melt that jam. And then to this I want to add two teaspoons of vanilla extract and one half cup, 120 milliliters of heavy cream. You can hear that yappy dog, that's the imbecilic neighbor's dog. And then again, blend this really well. And that is the base for my ice cream. I'm going to let this cool down and then I'm going to refrigerate it overnight. 
And then tomorrow I will put this in my ice cream maker and we will have boysenberry ice cream. So here we are now, the next day. I'm ready to start turning my ice cream mixture. You don't need to refrigerate that base overnight. You can chill it quickly in an ice bath. I've done that. Where you set up a large bowl, you put water and ice in there, push your pan down into the cold water and stir it until the mixture is cooled down. I don't mind putting it in the refrigerator and turning it the next day. But what I need to do now is show you my ice cream maker and just explain a few things on how they work. These are the components to my ice cream maker. This is the motorized base. It's got a little turn style thing here. The way this ice cream maker works is rather than having a rotating paddle that churns the ice cream, you put the mix in a frozen container and then the mix is rotated around a stationary paddle. It does the same thing in just a different way. This is the canister that has to be stored in the refrigerator, I'm sorry, in the freezer at least 24 hours typically to get it cold enough to freeze the ice cream. This is the lid and this is the paddle here. One thing about this that's worth mentioning is there's this little indicator right here. This is supposedly the maximum fill point when you put the batter in. I've filled my canister below this and still it'll churn up so high it comes up over the top the way I start this up because it can be difficult to get everything lined up by doing it this way. I put my paddle inside of my lid and then using that little max line I get my finger on that thing and hold this in place like so. So I've got it held in place and then I assemble it. There's little tips on here that slide into locking grooves on the bottom of my unit. Now it's important to get this rotating before you put your ice cream mix in otherwise it'll just start freezing to that container and that'll jam everything up. And there's nothing you can do but wait for everything to thaw put your mix back in the refrigerator, chill your canister for another 24 hours, and then start again. I've done that. It's awful. So I'm going to start my unit up. You can see my canister is rotating in there. To make less of a mess, I use a funnel that is basically the top of a juice jar. And then I'm going to pour my mix in there. get it all in there and looking at that maximum fill line I can see that I'm well below that maximum fill line well below but this is going to come up so high that I'm going to have ice cream almost coming out of the top of this. This has to churn now for a good 20 to 25 minutes. Again, that's freezing that mix and at the same time it's churning air into it, which will add body, volume, it'll come up pretty high. My ice cream now is just, oh maybe it's a half of an inch below the rim of this cover. So I'm going to turn this off and I'm working rather quickly so it doesn't freeze too much to the outside of the container. I want to transfer my ice cream now, oh look how delicious that looks, to a freezer safe container. I have two of these that I bought specifically for ice cream and that's all I ever use them for. If you're hearing noise outside, the people across the street are building an illegal wooden shed.
but I don't pay any attention. Okay, that's the paddle, and now I'll transfer all of this from the canister. This is right now too soft to eat because it'll just melt within minutes. So you want to store this in the freezer and freeze it further. Supposedly the ideal temperature at which to serve ice cream is 6 to 10 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 14 to minus 12 degrees Celsius. That other noise is the mail truck. Yes, folks, this really is a mobile home. It's not a TV studio. So there's my ice cream. You can see from my marker there that I got about one quart. I want to just clean this top edge a little bit. Put the cover on and put this in the freezer for two to three, maybe four hours. My ice cream has been in the freezer for a while now, so I'm ready to plate this and see what it tastes like. So I've got a little bowl here and an ice cream scoop. Oh, very nice. There it is. And I wanna see what that tastes like. Ah, so there it is. I'm so looking forward to this. I love homemade ice cream. Mm. <laughs> See, that is rich and creamy and smooth because it's made with a cooked custard, not just frozen milk, cream, and eggs. Okay, excuse me. I got to go enjoy my boysenberry ice cream. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.